You've made it to the RTX 3070 Promise Land. Let's find out if there's more than likely random card you just bought because you just bought what you could actually find because nothing is in stock. Let's find out if it's actually good. All right, shall we unbox this absolute beast of a card? I think we should. I think that's the only way. Let's see if we can just shimmy this out. Uh, there we go. The box to the side. Let's flip this boy open. So you get your little package of infra stuff. Doesn't matter to us. And now we get to see the absolute unit of a card. There's your little power connectors. Would not recommend using these, but you could if you wanted to, or if you had to. Two six pin to one eight pin. Here it is. The thing we've all been waiting for. The RTX 3070. There she is, in all of her glory. What a beautiful card, eh? Unobtainium. All right, let's jump into the benchmarks. So the unboxing is either gonna be at the end of the video or the beginning, yet either way, I hope you enjoyed it. Although, let's move on. It's been quite clear that Nvidia has had a lot of issues keeping up 3070 stock, which has been extremely evident from the multiple thousands of people who are sitting online watching live streams of live stock trackers, or the fact that it took me two weeks to finally buy one. Yet now that it's finally here, we can boot up our benchmarks and actually see what we got. Coming up first here, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider coming in with a strong start, getting a solid 93 FPS average, which I feel could be a lot higher if we weren't bottlenecked by my older 1600X CPU, which we will soon be upgrading. Make sure you stay tuned for that. I considered upgrading before doing this review, yet not everyone is running some super high-end CPU. According to the latest Steam hardware survey, a lot of people are still running four cores and two core older Intel CPUs, which I feel my 1600X is more than likely gonna be equal or better to a lot of those older Intel CPUs. Yet moving on, we have Metro Last Light Exodus, I really didn't realize how pretty this game could look maxed out. Now, we would have benchmarked this game with RTX on, yet for some reason, the game's benchmark tool said the RTX 30 isn't supported for RTX, which was very confusing, yet I assume it hasn't been updated for the latest cards that have just come out. Anyways, on the extreme setting, we got 60 FPS, which to me sounds pretty low, but when we went on Ultra, we got 100 FPS. So I'm, I'm not quite sure if it was kicking on RTX somehow, or there was a weird bug with the benchmark tool, but there was a big FPS gap, so your mileage may vary on that game. Moving on to Project Cars. I didn't realize how easy this game was to run. As we got around 140 FPS. Speaking of easy to run though, CSGO. We got around 300 FPS, which I've seen other reviews getting around 400, but that speaks to the difference between the new Ryzen CPUs that a lot of people are using for benchmarks and the 1600X. The new Zen 3 CPUs have a huge IPC uplift over the first and second gen chips. Although, unless you have a 360 hertz monitor, then this is a very respectable FPS. For comparison, my older 980 got around 120 to 170 FPS on max settings at 1080p in CSGO. So earlier we spoke about RTX, and that has been one of the biggest improvement that NVIDIA has made over the RTX 2000 series of GPUs. The couple of ray trace games that I tested, it was buttery smooth from Quake, RTX hitting almost 80 FPS and looking gorgeous for a very old game, or Shadow of the Tomb Raider RTX, we got a nice steady FPS. This was my personal first time using ray tracing, and it was a very cool experience. I honestly don't play a lot of story games, but this is clearly the future of shadows and light. 
lightning, lightning, lighting, especially for story games. Bake Shadows have got nothing on this personally, and I think this is an amazing technology. We also ran the RTX 3070 through 3D Mark Port Real with RTX on or ray tracing on. And as you can see here, we can see the 3070 flexing its beautiful second gen ray tracing cores as it beats the 2080 Ti by around 400 points in my research. Now on the topic of the future, how long is this card really gonna last? Well, I can't say for sure, but based on the heat that this dual fan Zotac puts out, at around 70 degrees under a gaming load, it's not amazing. Yet I've heard a lot of people are having success undervolting this card and getting lower voltages and lower temperatures. So basically it's up to you how you're gonna handle that. Although, stay tuned for the next video, not the next video, a coming video, where we compa compare the Zotac dual fan card to the uh, EVGA XC3, I think? Three fan card, and we can see how the temperatures differ from card to card and having two fans versus three. In terms of power draw, this thing drinks the blood of mortal CPUs. I really mean it. And I really recommend having a 750 watt just for insurance or having a very good 650 watt as the 3070 can really suck back power and sometimes spikes way up when under load and can trip your voltage protection, literally just turning off your computer and kicking you out of your gaming experience. But let's talk about productivity. This card is pretty amazing compared to the 2080 Ti that it basically is replacing at half the price. With all these CUDA cores that the 3070 is now equipped with, it ripped through the Blender BMW render in 18 seconds with optics and 36 with CUDA, which is blistering fast in tests done by the one and only Linus Tech Tips. The 2080 Ti did the same in 20 seconds with optics and 41 with CUDA, which is a very good uplift for the 3070. So has NVIDIA made a unicorn here? A low budget card that's gonna get you high end performance for years to come? In a way, yes, it actually takes that unicorn status to heart as most people have never seen one except in pictures and drawings, or you could say NVIDIA's fairy tale book. Yet on a serious note, this card is a big improvement over the 2000 series of GPUs. And if you're someone who's still running a 980 or a 1070, then this is gonna be a huge leap in performance, especially if you have a strong CPU that can feed this big boy GPU. So if you haven't got one and see one for sale, I definitely recommend jumping on it because even if you end up, let's say wanting to go for a 3080 or wanting to downgrade to a 3060 Ti, you can still get your money back because the prices are so high and everyone wants one and no one can buy one. You can list these things on eBay at MSRP and you'll get your money back like literally probably in 10 minutes. It's kind of insane what's going on right now. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for what's coming next. I have a lot of interesting reviews coming up here. So we're really going to get cooking down this Christmas break stretch here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm Hunter from BHA Tech and I hope you have a good night.